to make it fun. So I would I would suggest for any entrepreneur, any person who has a goal to identify uh, appropriate rewards, identify what is worthy of that reward. So set those those mile markers or those milestones. Um, and even along the way, if if you have that B, BHAG or that big, uh, you know, 10 year target, there's going to be signposts along the way to achieving that big goal. Uh, set those signposts up and make sure that when you hit them, that you celebrate. So good morning and welcome to another edition of Better Business, Better Life. Today I'm super excited because I'm joined by one of my, my fellow EOS implementers, Amanda Barkey. Not only is she a professional EOS implementer, she's a wife, she's a mother of five children, but she's also an owner of four franchises of soccer shots with her husband, who is the visionary in that business. Is that right, Amanda? You got it. Uh, well, look, thank you so much for joining me. I, I have followed you with interest um, on social media. I saw you winning your award the other day. And I thought, I've got to have this lady on the show. We need to talk about, you know, how, how you got into EOS and what you've been doing with your life. So really pleased to have you here. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Deborah. And I, likewise, I follow you and I've listened to many, many hours of your podcast. So I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Oh, that's great. Thank you. So I, we've just been having a quick chat, as we always do before the podcast, and you've just told me your story. And, mm -hmm. you know, you are both um, from a refugee and now you're immigrants in the U.S. living the American dream. Would you mind sharing a wee bit of your story so that the listeners can get a sense of who Amanda is? Sure. Yeah. So um, my grandparents were all political refugees. My parents are immigrants. So I'm a first generation born Canadian. Uh, I grew up in Canada, very humble beginnings. Uh, my parents were both blue collar work workers, worked multiple jobs just to make ends meet. Um, I met my husband up in Canada. Uh, we got married and then dove into the entrepreneurial life. So I think my husband was probably uh, born coming out of the womb with a, a business plan. He, he's an entrepreneur <laughs> through and through, um, much more of a risk taker than I am, but he's imparted that, um, that uh, drive and that um, passion uh, onto me. So we moved down to America in 2009. So that was about 13 years ago now, left everything that we ever knew, everything that we had, uh, lost our house during the housing recession, uh, the housing crisis, and put everything we had in the back of a car and just started a new life in America. And uh, that was 13 years ago. And now we are successful business owners. We're entrepreneurs. We have multiple businesses, multiple children, five children <laughs> later, and um, just living a beautiful life in California and doing what we love with people we love, with time for other passions, making a huge impact uh, and being adequately compensated. So can't complain. Living US life. Yeah, yeah. for sure. That is fantastic. And you just recently won the award for Franchise Rockstar of the Year. Is that right? We did. Yeah. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Well, that's fantastic. Thank you so much. It's a huge accomplishment for ourselves. Mm. We, we've we been part of this franchise, our Soccer Shots franchise, for 13 years. It's been an amazing journey, uh, a really rewarding and fulfilling life. But to be uh, nominated uh, out of all of the franchises in our franchise system, uh, there's over 200 individual franchises across the country and in Canada, and then to win out of 300,000 um, nominees was just incredible. Such a such an honor. So thank you. Yeah, no, that's I'm really 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 proud of you. It's um, great to see. Hey, so you you actually run on EOS in your business, is that right? Yeah, you got it. Yeah, and you were a self implementer too, weren't you? So tell I us a little bit about it. what what happened. How did you come across EOS, and why did you decide to self implement EOS into the business? Yeah, well, so really plainly, we decided to self-implement because we didn't have any money. <laughs> we couldn't <laughs> afford to hire an implementer. We were, it was really in the beginning stages of our journey. We re were really a young uh, business at the time. Um, and it's funny looking back now, obviously as a professional implementer, I know the benefits of hiring a professional. I like to say, you know, you can self-implement just like you can remodel your bathroom. If you want to, you can do it yourself. Um, but it's going to take a lot longer. It's going to be a lot harder than if you hire a professional. So um, looking back and, and there's always, you know, everything's hindsight, hindsight 2020. Um, yep. Looking back, I, I would definitely take out 
credit cards, a line of credit, and ask, beg anybody for a loan so that I could hire a professional and and do it the right way. But uh, we just did whatever we could to um, to get EOS into our business and start running on EOS as soon as possible. Um, we read the book and it just uh, it just was a light bulb moment for us. Uh, it was a huge aha moment, and we knew that this was what was missing in our business. Um, So we self-implemented. I have such a heart for self-implementers because they're just such gritty, determined, uh, wonderful entrepreneurs. And so they're actually some of my favorite clients to take on because they've been trying. They get it. They're hungry for it and they love it, uh, but they just can't get themselves to that next level. And so I get to help them and take them there. Wow, that's wonderful. It's funny, isn't it? Because I actually, um, I had been coaching for many years and running businesses for even more years before I came across EOS. And I had that light bulb moment myself as well, read the book and just went, oh my goodness, this brings together like everything I've done in terms of running pretty large businesses over here. Um, All of my study that I did in my MBA and then the, the frameworks around, you know, being an entrepreneur. And it was just, it was like, wow, this was, um, the best find ever, I think, for me in terms of just right. bringing together a really simple framework people could actually use. Yeah, for us, it was really um, an aha moment uh, because we didn't even know anything like this existed. Yeah. We uh, we were just going along to get along. We we decided to start a business and just was we were learning as we were going along and learning from our mistakes growing by our reputation but we really didn't know what what the heck we were doing and um we really felt frustrated and out of control and when we read traction it it just was a game changer for us we we didn't know what we didn't know and you know when you find that that golden ticket or that key yeah. uh and run with it it's just it's a game changer was life changing. So what was the biggest frustration do you think in the business before you came across traction? Yeah, you know, I think um, in life uh, and in business, for me, the biggest frustration has been um, lack of opportunity. Uh, I've never had anything handed to me and I, I've had to create opportunities for myself uh, and my husband has been in the same shoes. And so we were constantly trying to create opportunities from these obstacles that we were facing in in our business and in our life. And uh, I feel like we were firefighters and now we're fire preventers. Um, so we were coming across all of these train wrecks and these uh, these obstacles and these challenges uh, while we were running our business and trying to just like pick up the pieces and and trying to fix things. We were fixers. And mm-hmm. uh, once we implemented EOS, we were able to step back and see things before. We, it's like looking instead of looking um, when you're driving in the rear view mirror or looking uh, at things that are coming uh, that are that came behind you, we're looking through the windshield and we could see things a hundred miles ahead. So uh, yeah, so that's what really, really solved those, uh, those frustrations of really just trying to uh, pick up the pieces when things fell apart, we were able to predict um, really well. And that's, that's just changed everything for us. Oh, that's great. And uh, is there a favorite tool, do you think, of the EOS? I mean, I know it's a complete framework, and I know that obviously right. it's important you strengthen all six key components to get the results. But was there something that just, you know, you started using and immediately had an effect for you? Oh, absolutely. So I, my favorite tool, well, so I think, I think this is a two-part question. The thing that for us changed everything immediately was the level 10 meeting. Uh, We weren't even having meetings before. So (laughs) (laughs) we just, just to start having meetings, have an agenda and follow that and, and be able to uh, really identify, uh, discuss and solve issues uh, Mm -hmm. was a game changer for us. Because like I said before, we were um, solving issues and making them go away forever so that we didn't have to, uh, Uh, put out those fires again and again and again. Uh, For me as an implementer, my favorite tool is the people analyzer. So core values are very, very important to my husband and I. Uh, We have core values for our soccer shots business. You know, we have core values as EOS implementers with EOS Mm -hmm. worldwide. We have family core values and I've done a personal core values assessment. So I have my own personal core values and using those core values 
uh, is integral to who we are as people when we're making decisions in our lives, uh, decisions that have to do with relationships, uh, where we spend our money, who we support, the organizations and donation projects that we pour ourselves into. Um, and I think the People Analyzer is just uh, a really important tool um, to to really put your core values into play so that your core values come to life. Because, you know, you can have core values, uh, you can define your core values or discover your core values and post them up on the wall and, and they're lovely. But if you're not actually using your core values, they're simply core aspirations. And so I think that it's very important to use your core values every day. We use our core values in the way that we speak with our employees, uh, the way that we speak with our children. And so we use them to communicate. And then using the people analyzer, we use them to assess people in our lives. And uh, we use it in our business and also in our personal life. So I think yep. that the people analyzer is my favorite tool. Your favorite tool. I tell you what. So the people who maybe have not come across this, the people mm -hmm. analyzer is an EOS tool, part of the framework that actually just gives you a chance. First, we define your core values and then you put them against the people and you get them, give them a chance to understand that that the plus means that 90% of the time they actually exhibit that core value. A plus minus means they tend to flip flop and then a minus means they don't exhibit that core value. So that's kind of how you score people in there. But it enables you to have a conversation then with those people, doesn't it, around you Correct. know where they're at. So so can you give me an example of where you've actually used that in your business and, and the value that it has brought? Yeah. So, um, you know, the people analyzer is used to assess whether or not your people, black or white, there's no gray area, are aligned with your core values and who you are at the core as an organization mm -hmm. and as people. And, um, and better yet, it helps to facilitate that communication. Uh, so we use it in our interviewing process. We, uh, we use the people analyzer, we show it to our newest hires and we say, look, like these are our core values. And um, we almost use it to try to unsell them. Um, and we try to sort of have them uh, second guess or question whether or not they actually want to work for us. Mm -hmm. uh, and we say, look, like if these are not your core values, that's okay. There's no good or bad core values, right? Yeah. They just are. And so these are ours. And if you align with these core values, you're going to love working here. If you don't, this is not the place for you. There's probably another place that has core values that align with who you are. But it really, uh, from hiring, reviewing, rewarding, firing, it helps us to uh, to really facilitate that communication with our employees as to whether or not they're aligned with who we are. And it's really served us well. So in our industry with soccer shots, uh, a typical soccer shots coach uh, will work for a soccer shots business for, I'd say, uh, six to 18 months at the most. Okay. There's a high turnover, low retention rate. Uh, most of these people that we're hiring are college age kids. So there's a lot of different uh, factors at play as to why um, we can't retain coaches uh, as, as long as some other businesses might retain their employees. Mm -hmm. But with Soccer Shots Orange County, hiring, uh, reviewing, rewarding, firing with our core values has produced this culture in our organization that is second to none. We have this year four employees who are celebrating 10 years with Soccer Shots Orange wow. County. So we're very, very proud of that. Uh, we've yeah. built a very strong culture. And I think that it is because we've leaned so heavily into our core values. They know mm -hmm. who we are as an organization and as people. We live out our core values every day. And it really has helped us to retain employees and to attract the right people who align with who we are. We love the people who work with us like family. Yeah. Uh, I have five children, as you had mentioned, um, and uh, I would say 90% of our coaches are uncle and aunt to our kids. So we have a strong culture in our organization, and, and I really, truly believe it's due to the fact that we've leaned so heavily into those core values. Mm. And I think you're absolutely right. I mean, it's, it's a great tool for kind of managing the, the people in the day-to-day, -day, but it is really a tool for making sure you get the right people on board too. Have you ever had anybody who, um, you know, might have said that they have the same core values as you, but then discovered uh, that, that perhaps they weren't quite on the same page? Yeah, we have. Um, it, it doesn't happen often. We're very candid uh, with our employees, but it does happen once in a while. And, um, and that's okay. We, we don't take it personally because we're using this tool, you know, yeah. so it's, 
it's a, a great way to sort of take the emotion or take the ego or, uh, you know, any of that stuff out of it. Mm. Uh, it just, it is what it is. It's very plain and simple. So, um, yeah. Fantastic. So going back to the other tool that you said kind of was a game changer in your business, the level 10 meetings, I have to say, this is probably one of my favorite tools only because when I, if ever I start with a new client, I just see that it's one of the first tools that we teach and they start to implement it immediately. And literally within three to four weeks, the way the business runs is just completely changed. Right. And then within three to four months, you're seeing results that are just unheard of. So um, a little bit about the level 10 meeting. What can you tell us about the level 10 meeting? Why do you think it is so effective? Well, it's just an agenda that's so effective. So I like to look at the level 10 meeting, at, you know, it's a 90 minute meeting. It's a big mm -hmm. chunk of time. It's the probably the most expensive time in your week. And um, it, to me, it's a time management tool. So you're using this time together effectively and efficiently um, so that you can avoid those train wrecks and you're saving time later in the week. I can't, I can't even count the hours that we've saved in, in the weeks that, um, that have followed the level 10 meeting because we've spent that time in those 90 minutes uh, really uh, assessing our business, IDSing and solving the big issues in our business before they become those train wrecks. So mm -hmm. it's a time management tool. I can't imagine having a meeting without an agenda. That's just nutty to me at this point. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm just, it's invaluable. And, and, and the thing that I love the most about it is that anyone can do it. You can, yeah. you can change your meetings tomorrow. You can start using this agenda. It's very simple. It's simple mm -hmm. to understand and it's simple to use and it will change your business from the get go. So you, you run that meeting using this agenda, walk out of there and your business is going to start to change. Yeah. And so the, the IDS, for those who may not have heard of it, it's what we call the issue solving track. It is a process that we go through to actually really, truly identify what is the real issue with with um, whatever you're talking about. And then we, we spend the time to discuss it with the intention of solving it. And then the S is the solve, which is where you actually come up with things to do. Um, the, there's a big chunk of that that meeting that is actually based around that 60 minutes of that 90 minute meeting is all based around IDSing or solving issues. Um, and I think it's really key. It is It just, it changes the way that you view the business, doesn't it? I mean, when you start Absolutely. to actually list your issues and start to work through them and really understand what the, the real issues are, that fundamentally changes the way you approach the business. Sure. Yeah. And, you know, in my own personal life, my my husband and I have IDS um, certain challenges or obstacles with our children. Uh, mm -hmm. We've used the IDS concept um, in family meetings. And it's just so effective and so important because what it does is it creates, well, just the issues list alone creates uh, this culture where people aren't afraid to call out an issue. Um, you know, there's no sense in sweeping things under the rug. I believe in personal or business life, um, that's not going to um, move anything along. You know, if nothing changes, nothing changes. So, yeah. Uh, I really believe in the open and honest and just getting it out there. And that's what the issues list and IDSing does. And moving to that solve is so empowering. So, um, yeah, it's just it's an incredible tool. Yeah. And I think it's really important when we talk about issues, I think people kind of tend to see that as being a negative. But like you said, actually better that you have these things out there and you're dealing with them. But it's also opportunities, right? It's not necessarily, it can be issues, it can be opportunities, it can be challenges, whatever it might be. But just actually right. having those conversations. Yeah. 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 And so some people will be sitting here listening going, that sounds really, really great. But 90 minutes a week, I don't have 90 minutes right. a week to put into a meeting. What would you say to those people? You do. Trust me, you do. <laughs> you know, if you don't make the time, if you don't take that 90 minutes, you are going to be spending so much more time putting out those fires. So like I said mm -hmm. earlier, we want to be fire preventers rather than firefighters. And so if you're happy being a firefighter and putting out those fires, you know, all day, every day, by all means, don't take the time. But uh, 90 minutes is a short amount of time to get what you need to get done to avoid all of that. If you really look at the grand scheme of things, it's really not that that 
uh, big of an ask. So mm -hmm. you have the time. You you just need to make it a priority. It, and if you can't make it a priority, then you're probably not in enough pain. <laughs> so <laughs> when, when you really, yeah, once you are the, and then you try uh, the level 10 meeting, you'll realize what um, what an efficient and effective use of time it really is. And I think over time, I've seen with my clients is that, you know, over time as well, it actually removes all the other little ad hoc meetings that you are having as mm -hmm. well. So in theory, you can get your meetings down to no more than sort of two meetings in a week, um, unless it's based around projects and things, which means yeah. you've got rid of all the additional. I mean, some 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 of some of my clients have meetings for Africa at, P, at PS. Right. And it's like, actually, let's get rid of all of those and let's have one really good meeting that actually produces the results that you require. Got it. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, so what what else have you seen change? So, I mean, 13 is a long, long time. So, you know, again, congratulations on, on going for so long. What else have you seen change since you brought EOS into the business? Yeah, I mean, everything has changed for us. So um, we implemented EOS in 2014. And, uh, you know, our business has changed. We've, we immediately saw uh, exponential growth in our business. We uh, ended up in the top five of 125 franchises at that time in the country. Mm -hmm. um, and we've been able to stay at the top of the pack um, over the course of time. But it also has given us much more than just profit and growth. It's given us tools to be able to um, to get the life that we want, to live a life mm -hmm. by design. So uh, we were in a partnership with a business partner and uh, we went through a really brutal, um, devastating split of our partnership in 2018. Uh, and it was really hard. I've never been through divorce. My parents are still together. I'm, I'm with my husband. We, I've never experienced divorce, but this is as close to a divorce that I could imagine. Um, but we wouldn't have been able to get there. We wouldn't have been able to make that decision and work through that split if it wasn't for the EOS tools revealing uh, the areas of our business that, that we needed to um, change. So it, it's given us the framework to make really big, important decisions in our business and in our life. Uh, it smoked out those issues, uh, like I said, and then also, uh, it's given me an opportunity to completely work my way out of operations. My husband isn't out of operations yet, but it's because he's the visionary of our business and he's absolutely in love with his role. He um, he chooses the amount of hours that he works, so he's definitely not a full-time employee by any means, but he is the the driver of culture in our organization and uh and he loves it. And so he's doing what he loves, which is great. But I've been able to work my way out of operations completely. And uh, and that's how I've been able to, to uh, capitalize on this opportunity to become a professional EOS implementer. And yeah. um, and that's only because of EOS. And, and also, you know, it's given us opportunities for freedom in other areas of our lives. In 2018, after that split, we uh, adopted our oldest son. And um, we hosted him first uh, in the summer of 2018. Um, he came and spent five weeks with us that summer, and we were able to take those five weeks completely off and just spend them with our children. And then four months later, we traveled to Columbia to go uh, complete the adoption and pick him up. And we took another month off. Um, and during that month, actually, my integrator had her first child, so she yeah. took time off to have her baby. Uh, and then one of another uh, leadership team member of ours, his wife had a baby. And so there were three of us on the leadership team, well, technically four, because at that time I was on the leadership team that were completely out of operations. We were out of the country and our mm -hmm. business broke through a ceiling that month and we hit a milestone uh, revenue milestone that we we had never even dreamed of hitting. So uh, if that right. doesn't show you how EOS works, I don't know what does. So <laughs> no, I think that, does, that very, very clearly demonstrates it. Yeah. And I think it is important because sometimes we believe that we have to put all these hours and that we have to be there consistently. But in actual fact, that's usually a, a symptom that something not quite right in the business. And if you right. can actually strengthen those key components, then you can elevate yourself out. And, and so you're now purely in the owner's box is that right you're not on the leadership team anymore you're not involved in the operations of the business yeah yes. and so you've managed to so you know go and do, become a professional EOS implementer mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about that journey so what what made you want to do that 
Yeah, you know, somebody asked me this yesterday. Actually, I just got yeah. back from QCE. QCE is our uh, our quarterly Have community quarterly. collaborative exchange. And um, another implementer asked me, what made you decide to do this? And I said, I don't know. <laughs> he said, that's a bad answer. <laughs> but uh, really, truly, I can't really put my finger on it. I just knew in my gut that this was for me. So mm -hmm. um, this year, actually, in January, we had our uh, annual planning meeting, Martin Luther King Jr. Day. That's here in America. It's on a Monday. Uh, the yep. following Thursday, we had our same page meeting. So myself as the owner, my husband's the visionary, and then our integrator, Nancy. She's been with us for the last eight years. Uh, we're very close, the three of us. Uh, we affectionately call her our third wheel. Uh, so we had our same page meeting and, um, you know, they said, Amanda, like the kids are all in school full time. All of our kids are school aged. Uh, the business is back. We, we really suffered during COVID where our children's uh, extracurricular program. So, uh, yeah, we when the schools shut down, we shut down and California was uh, was restricted for a very long time. So. We were officially back in January. We were 100% healthy again. And we just kind of had a moment where we were like, you know, what's next? What's next for you? Because we know what Nancy's going to be doing. We know what Jobin's going to be doing. What is Amanda going to be doing? And um, and they really held my feet to the fire. Nancy um, became a fractional integrator during COVID. And so she's had a lot of success with that. And uh, with that, she has a surplus of clients. So she was saying, look, you could become an integrator and we could start some sort of a firm here and I could refer all these clients to you. And I thought about it probably for about 30 seconds and decided, no, that's not for me. I've seen Nancy literally sit at my dining room table and do L10 after L10 for her clients and get on all of these one-on-one -on -one calls. And I just knew that that wasn't for me. I'm not interested in, mm -hmm. uh, in doing that. But, uh, you know, the next thing, sort of the na next natural pro progression was implementer. You know, m the three of us said we have uh, an integrator. We have a visionary. What about an, adding an implementer to the group? <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I, I never really considered it before. Um, and it just was one of those moments where lightning strikes and you're like, of course, this is, yeah. this is what I meant to do. So, uh, I watched the webinar the next day and 17 days later I was at boot camp, and, uh, and I've never looked back. So nice. it's just, this year has been the most incredible year of my life. It's been the best year of my life. And that was, um, just one of those momentous occasions that I, I'll never forget sitting in that cafe and making that decision. Yep. Yeah. I had a similar thing. I mean, I actually, uh, I don't know if you know, but EOS actually used my event set, um, center in Parnell in Auckland here to okay. actually launch EOS into New Zealand. Okay. And I couldn't actually attend the launch, but because it was my event center, I obviously saw the booking and thought, well, I wonder what this EOS is. And they left a couple of the books. When I read the books, I just immediately picked up the phone to Fran and said, look, I'm, I'm really keen to find out more about this. And she said, well, you'd be an awesome implementer. And literally within, I think it was three weeks, I was on a plane going and do my boot camp, And then that was it. I've been an implementer. Great. since almost three years now Wonderful. but uh, yeah it's, it's a great decision hey tell me about the type of clients that you like to work with and, and what is you know what are the what's the ideal client for you yeah I don't think I've quite figured that out yet um okay. as far as ideal uh our our target um client is uh open and honest willing to be vulnerable with themselves and the people around them uh, more afraid of the status quo than they are of change. That's who I am. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur and I connect with other entrepreneurs who are wired like me. Uh, yeah. I really love meeting um, people who, who get it. You know, you yeah. can just tell when an entrepreneur gets it. And, uh, and I've, I've especially enjoyed working with other self-implementers. Uh, it's been a joy to be able to uh, work with people who get it and they've experienced a, experienced a taste of EOS uh, mm. and, and they just, they know what's uh, available and they know that there's more, uh, more to this that they just can't quite get. And so to be able to help them get that uh, is just a joy for me. So I really enjoy working with self-implementers. Um, 
and really just real gritty, genuine, uh, salt of the earth entrepreneurs who have started something from nothing and grown this amazing, beautiful uh, business and are ready to take it to the next level. Yeah, I think it's one of the things that also made me fall in love with the OS too, is that all of our implementers, we are all entrepreneurs ourselves. We've all run businesses. We've all had the challenges that come with running a business. We understand what it's like to be in the shoes of, of our clients because there's a lot of coaches out there around the world who, you know, might might well be good coaches who, who can say, but they've not had that experience. And I think unless you've actually been there and done that, sort of, you know, walked in those shoes, it's it's yeah. it's difficult to understand what your clients are going through. Yeah, I was just actually saying this yesterday, you know, I um, became an implementer after using and experiencing EOS in my business for eight years. So I am not coming into a session room and teaching a tool and saying, look, this is the level 10 meeting. I've watched a video about it a hundred times. I've sat in a hundred level 10 meetings. I've experienced using this tool. And so I, I've seen the effects of it. I know it inside and out. And I think that that's almost a, a superpower that I have yeah. that I can share with my clients because I've been there, I've been in their shoes and I can relate. And uh, I have that, ex that real world experience. Mm. Absolutely. Okay, so now it's been already half an hour. It's amazing how quickly this time goes. And, I, and I'm really conscious. I like to try and keep these things nice and short and sharp so people can listen to on the way and into work and whatnot. But we always ask, you know, for three tip, top tips or tools because I love for the listeners to be able to go away and do something with the stuff that we've talked about. So would you share with me your three top tips or tools? Sure. Yeah, I did put some thought into this. I've listened to your sure. podcast, so I knew what was coming. Um <laughs> And I shared on Instagram recently my eight don'ts. So, uh, you know, people like to share the things that people should do, the do's. And, uh, and I came up with a creative post and I've been sharing my don'ts. So I have my top eight don'ts and I took three don'ts from that list. So right. uh, my first tip is don't wait to feel ready. Uh, so figure out what you're passionate about and do that thing. Uh, if you wait to do anything meaningful with your life, you're going to be waiting forever. So don't wait to feel ready. Um, I, I really think that doubt killed more dreams than failure ever did. So if you're sitting there and thinking about something that you want to do and thinking about that dream or that big idea and not taking action on it and doubting yourself, um, it's just going to die. So yeah. don't wait to feel ready. That would be my very first tip. Um, and you know, you, you don't have to have all your ducks in a row. You don't need to know, um, you know, the game plan, um, you know, years out, you just need to know what the next step is and take that step. Really put, mm -hmm. put your, um, put your, money where your mouth is and and put your feet to the fire and get uncomfortable and take the risks and just go for it if you have that dream then don't wait to feel ready Great. so that would Good be my advice. first tip yep. number two is don't back down once you've decided so mm. you know um, i think that our minds are very powerful and when you decide to do something and then back down, uh, there's something psychologically that happens where you you make yourself small. So there's power in keeping promises to yourself. Um, and I think that, like I said, you need to become comfortable with being uncomfortable. That's where the massive growth happens. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, even if it's scary or it's uncomfortable, take that leap and, and stick with it because that's where you're going to grow. And um, just start small, take those small steps, but keep doing them, be consistent, whether it's starting a business, uh, moving to a new country, uh, joining a gym and starting a, a fitness plan, just do it, just do it, start and then stick with it, stay consistent. Yeah. So stay don't consistent. back down yeah. once you decided. Uh, I'm just going to butt in for a second. That's really interesting. I, I, I love doing my podcast and I've been doing this for a little bit over, must be almost two years now, I think. Yeah. And it was interesting to see that a lot of people who start podcasts, they don't get past the first sort of five, six, seven episodes, and then they kind of give up. We're up almost up to 100 now. Wow. Um, and so it is part of that power of just consistency. Yeah. And, you know, the more and more, that, and it's just like going to the gym, the more and more you do it, the more it becomes a habit, the more you enjoy it. It's a, a self-fulfilling prophecy. <laughs> sure. Listen, half the battle is showing up. So just show up stay yep. consistent. Um, and then you'll, you'll see awesome results. So yeah, right. I think if you're persistent, then you'll get it. And if you're consistent, you'll keep it. 
So mm. stay consistent. Love it. And, and then number three. Third, I would say, you know, I, I don't want to do anything if it's not fun. Um, so make it fun and uh, make sure that you don't forget to celebrate your successes. So, so often I find that entrepreneurs, um, they, they forget to celebrate. Uh, you know, nobody is uh, making me employee of the month. Nobody's giving me that plaque or putting my, my picture up on the wall and celebrating my progress and my, my success. So mm. I have to do it for myself. Yeah. And um, just like we have to schedule in our clarity breaks, you need to schedule in celebration. So mm. uh, we realized this really early on, um, you know, when my husband and I started this business, one of our very first um, milestones that we wanted to get get to was to build our business to six figures. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did that. We reached that six figure revenue milestone and we were in no position to go celebrate, go on a vacation or, or, you know, do any of that by any means, but we did it. We, we said that we were going to celebrate when we hit that milestone. Uh, we, got my mother-in-law to come in and watch the kids. And we took off and went to Mexico for a week. And during that week, we lost two employees. We lost three accounts. Um, it was, it, there, were, there was a, a lot going on back here at home. But do you think that I remember the names of those employees or, or the accounts that we lost? No, but I will mm -hmm. never forget that trip. It was yeah. really important. And we actually experienced um, some major breakthrough moments during that trip, some, some, big realizations happen. And I think that that happens when you remove yourself from the business and yeah. you take that time away. And so it, it would have been really easy for us to not take that trip. There were a lot yeah. of things standing in the way, but we put it on the calendar and we put it, uh, we put that plan into motion before we even reached that goal and we didn't mm -hmm. back down from that commitment. So life is too short. You need to make it fun. So I would, I would suggest for any entrepreneur, any person who has a goal to identify uh, appropriate rewards, identify what is worthy of that reward. So set those, those mile markers or those milestones. Um, mm -hmm. And even along the way, if, if you have that BHAG or that big, uh, you know, 10 year target, there's going to be signposts along the way to achieving that big goal. Uh, set those signposts up and make sure that when you hit them, that you celebrate what, and it doesn't have to be a big trip to Mexico. You know, you could go <laughs> buy yourself uh, your favorite coffee or um, take yourself, uh, go get a massage or it could be something small along the way, but make sure that you're celebrating your success. It really is um, something that is important to do. And People who celebrate their successes are generally more motivated, they're more optimistic, they're less stressed. And so it's going to benefit you along the way and in the long run. So don't forget to celebrate. I love it. And I think uh, particularly as entrepreneurs, we can be quite tough on ourselves too. Absolutely. So I think that, you know, it, we, you know, that's what also what keeps us going and keeps us motivated and probably makes us achieve. But at the same time, we have to take that time out to, sure. to and reward I, ourselves. Absolutely. And I was saying to my husband, you know, um, not only that, but there are so many people that are rooting for you, uh, that are watching you and they're, they're watching your journey. And when you don't celebrate you, then you are doing a disservice to the people who are rooting for you. So mm -hmm. you're not just doing a disservice to yourself. You're doing a disservice to all of those people. And so mm -hmm. keep that in mind. Celebrating is not a selfish thing. It's not a selfish act. Uh, you deserve it. You're worth it. And, uh, and, yeah, as an entrepreneur, nobody is going to do that for you. You need to make sure that you uh, you make that a priority. Yeah, perfect. Hey, look, great tips there. So I mean, so don't uh, don't wait to feel ready. Don't back down once you've decided, and don't forget to celebrate your successes along the way. Hey, Amanda, it's been an absolute pleasure to finally get to speak to you. Um, you. I'm hoping to see you when we come over um, for the QCE in Dallas next year. So can't wait, um, can't wait to meet people in, in person for the first time. But um, thank you for taking the time. Thank you for sharing with us your journey. Um, con again, congratulations on all that you've achieved and the awards and, and for becoming a professional EOS implementer because I, I have no doubt you're going to love it um, to pieces. Um, this is what I, I love to do. And I know that um, all of us in the community are very passionate about what we do. Thanks so much, Deborah. Likewise, I, I just, yeah. I appreciate you. I appreciate this community and I'm so grateful for this time together. So thank you. Yeah. I can't wait to give you a big hug in Dallas.
Ah, uh, me too. We're looking forward to it. Hey, look, thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day. And uh, we'll talk again soon. Likewise, you too. Thank you.